Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with my Mercedes ML Class W164 chassis vehicle. And today we're going to be doing a transmission service on this vehicle. Now, you may have seen, I'm actually creating a whole playlist of videos called Front to Rear, where we're actually replacing every single fluid in the vehicle. We started under the bonnet or under the hood and we've replaced there. We started with the radiator, the engine oil, we did the braking system, we did the power steering, we did absolutely everything under the bonnet. And then we jumped back underneath the vehicle where we started with the front differential, did the transfer case, brings us to today's video where we're doing the transmission. And in the future, you'll see the rear differential change. But anyway, back to today's video. Today, we're doing a simple service on the Mercedes transmission in this vehicle. Now, it's actually known as the Mercedes 7229 transmission. Some people call it the 4Matic, others call it the 7G Plus. It's all the same transmission. And we've deliberately designed today's video as an absolute beginner's guide if it's your first time ever attempting a service on a Mercedes transmission in this vehicle. Anyway, let's get into it. So let's have a look at the tools required to do the job. We are going to need a 10 mil socket to remove the under tray from the vehicle, a six mil or a T40 hex to get the drain plug out of the transmission. Then we've got an E10 and an E12. We've got a one remove the bracket at the front of the transmission with some electrical cables. And then the other one is to remove the transmission pan bolts. We've got our socket wrench and a uh, torque wrench. I've got my impact just to make it a little bit easier to get that under tray off. I've got a fill adapter because we need to fill the transmission from underneath. And that's why I've got this pump here and I've got my little mate pump. So you can kind of choose between a sprayer or one of these pumps. I'm going to use the pump today because then I can just pump it directly out of the fluid bottle as opposed to you fill this reservoir, either or. And then we've got a scan tool because part of the procedure, we actually need to heat up the fluid in the transmission to the correct temperature so we can set the level. Then I've got a drain pan here. Now you can see I've actually modified, just cut the top off of an old tub because I want it to be a little bit bigger just when we take that transmission pan down so we can minimize the mess. So to do the service, we are going to be getting underneath the vehicle. So we need to lift the vehicle up. I've got four quality jack stands to do that. Got my wheel chocks, safety's a must, and my three ton low profile jack. I just love this jack. You can check out a link in the description if you want to know a bit of a review on this jack. So let's have a look at the consumables that we're going to use here today. As you can see, I've got two four litres of good quality automatic transmission fluid. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about that because you need to make sure you actually get the right specification of fluid. Then we've got some lint-free cloth. We've got some evaporative parts cleaner for our cleaner. We have a new filter as you can see I've gone for a genuine Mercedes filter and you do need to be particular about the filter that you actually get for your vehicle we've got a new seal for that filter and then in this little box here you can see I've got new transmission pan bolts now the reason we've got new bolts these are actually aluminium stretch bolts and they're once use I've actually done a video on this in the past that you can see they actually break if you put too much force on them so don't reuse them we've got a new seal copper seal ring for the drain plug because we don't want it leaking after all and we actually have a new fill overflow now this is what sets the level in the transmission and there's a risk of breaking it so we've got a new one of those in the kit as well now back to the type of fluid as i said you need to make sure you get the right type of fluid and actually the right filter for your vehicle because from the middle of 2010 they actually did a low friction variant and they changed the transmission pan design. So the transmission fluid changes from approximately mid 2010 as a guide. But there's really three ways you can tell. That mid 2010 point in time, so before is the older type of fluid, the pink fluid, and that has an MB specification of MB236.14, or if it's later, it's typically blue, and it's an MB236.15. My fluid I've purchased here in Australia is actually a Penrite fluid and it's a multi-purpose fluid which does all of the specifications. That's one of the reasons I use it, but I understand internationally you can't get this fluid that does all specifications. On the 
filter, you actually change the filter too. So because of the difference in the transmission pan, it actually has a different height on the spout. So you need to make sure you get the right uh, filter for the type of transmission. So it's either a low friction or a non-low friction. Now the other way, just if it's not sheer date that you can tell, is actually by looking at the bottom of the transmission pan. Now for the later model where they redesigned the pan and made it fractionally deeper, the circles underneath became slightly oval whereas the earlier design they were round. Now, probably a better way though, because some people might have modified or put a different pan on it, is actually to look up the VIN number. And you can use last VIN, and you look up your VIN number, and what you do is you actually then look on the uh, specification of the vehicle, if it actually had option A89. And if a vehicle like mine had option A89, you know you're definitely the later variant. And so that's the low friction with the blue fluid, the MV236.15 fluid, the low A89 filter, which is actually a better quality of filter. So really then the absolutely final way you can confirm whether you've got the low friction transmission is actually when you drop the pan, you actually see this overflow spout. Now, I've got the green one, but on the earlier variant of the transmission, it's either white or black. So it's kind of a last resort because you want to buy all of your consumables before you drop the pan. But if, when you're in the job, you know, drop the pan, confirm the color of your spout. If you've got the white or black, you should have had the, the red fluid, the MB236.14. If you've got the green spout, you've got the later fluid, the blue fluid, the MB236.15. And it's kind of like a final confirmation. I know at that point it's probably too late, but you actually don't want to put the wrong type of fluid in your transmission so if you get to that point you've got the different colored spout start double checking folks so let's get this car up on the jack stands i'm just putting it onto time lapse now if you do need a detailed description of how to do this folks i'll chuck a link in i've got a full video on how i describe how to safely put your vehicle up onto jack stands and not do any damage to the vehicle and or harm to yourself so to start with we want to take this under tray off and we've got six 10 mil bolts to take out. So there's basically one there, one there, a couple back here, and then a couple down the back. So we'll just get those out now. That's what I'm just using my impact for, just to get them out easily. So jumping under our vehicle, we've got the transmission here. This is the front down here. And if we come in close, we can see these were the circles that I was talking about before. You can see the ones at the front are more of an oval shape, confirming this is the late generation of transmission in this vehicle. Here's the drain plug. Here are the pan bolts, there's six pan bolts. But before we start anything, we need to take this bracket off the W164 chassis in particular. They've got this bracket here we need to take off. So on this side, we've got an E12, and then up here on the other side, we, behind the actual front drive shaft, we've got another E12 to get out as well. And that's just gonna give us access to the pan belt actually on this side here. So we'll grab our E12 and we'll get those out now. So that one out there. So then up on this side here, we can see that we've got the other bolt right up there on the pan there, up in there. Let's get the socket onto that. You can see it is actually a little bit fiddly to get the socket actually onto that E12 there. We've got it, there we go. And get him out just like that. There we go. And you can see that just gives us enough. You just move that bracket out of the way just enough so we can get to those pan bolts now. So the next thing you want to do is to actually drain the fluid out of our transmission pan. I've got my modified catch pan here. So we're gonna use our T40, or as I said, a six mil. So undo that, just like that. And then I should be able to thread it out by hand. Let's move that pan across. And there we go. Let's 
Now, in the beginning, I showed you this level adapter that's inside the transmission. It sits up inside, and that's how it actually sets the level of the fluid. What we now need to do is to knock that over. So I've got a, just a pick. So we'll get that up inside, and we should be able to just knock that up. There we go. And then that's going to drain the remainder of that fluid. Like I say, that's just a pick. You can use, use a small screwdriver or a punch. I find a pick's just easier because you can just get it into a notch and just give it a nudge like I did there. You saw that knocked off really easily. That's now draining all of that fluid out of that transmission. Okay, so now that that has essentially completely drained, it's time to actually get our pan bolts out. So we've got the six, six pan bolts to get out. And you can see as they come out, they actually come out with that little clip, which hooks onto the side of the pan and just winches it up nicely. And importantly, this top one on this side is actually slightly different because it's got the other bolt which held that bracket all in place. So this one definitely has to go back in the right spot. I'll just show you that one just like that. And what I'm doing so I'm deliberately leaving the middle ones in at this stage. We'll take those out last because we will still have a little bit of fluid in the pan. So I just want to be as careful as we can when we manipulate that out. Now let's just slightly maneuver this out around that bracket. You can see, as I said, there's a little bit of fluid left in the pan. So then to remove the filter, it literally is just sitting in there we just give it a, a bit of a pull down, a bit of a wriggle, and you can see a little bit more fluids come out. Importantly, what we want to do is check that that O-ring that's on that spout actually came with the filter. And you can see it's on there, so that's perfect. So folks, this is the filter that's actually come out of this transmission of my vehicle. As you can see, it's a genuine Mercedes-Benz part, A222772. 000. Importantly, what's interesting is that Mercedes redesigned the filter on the later models with the uh, low friction option. And you can see it's a smart media, triple media filter. The earlier generations only had a single media. So why don't we open this filter up, have a look inside this one at the triple media, but also let's look to see if we've got any metal particles or anything on the filter material. So now that we've chopped this filter open, Obviously, we've kicked up a bit of dirt from outside. It's not probably not the best spot, but so let's pull this thing apart. Now, this would be the clean side. As you can see, that is just a little bit of dirt that I kicked up there. But let's have a look at the material. You can see that's really clean. That's probably the third layer of filtration. Got the second. That's really clean as well. And then we've got a more coarse probably the first layer of filtration and you can see that's absolutely clean as well so you can see this mercedes triple layer it's actually got to be honest it's got a fourth layer of material in here as well so you've got one and you got this two maybe that's just a membrane between it's got three or four layers actually in what they're calling this triple layered filter and you can see absolutely all of these are in remarkable condition so this filter's been on the vehicle as i say it's been on for two years coming up two years so somewhere between about forty thousand kilometers i reckon this filter's done on this vehicle so with the pan off we want to check that there's no chunks of metal and there's nothing in there at all that's really good you can actually see the fill adapter that we knocked over. The reason we got a spare is when you knock that over, you could actually break that. This one hasn't broken, so to be honest, we'll just pop the original back on, just click it on like that, and then that'll be perfect. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna clean this pan. Down on the end, these are the sub micron particle magnets. You can see, you know, that's just really fine microns. There's nothing serious, but we'll give those 
a decent clean with our evaporative parts cleaner. So we'll just give this whole thing a spray out and a wipe down. Just to clean this pan now completely. We'll actually pull these magnets out, give them a thorough clean. The important thing is that we put them back in approximately the same spot they come out in. All right, so as you can see, this pan is now absolutely spotless. So let's start prepping the pan. I've got a new gasket to go on the pan. And when you look around, you can see there's actually these rubber tabs just to hold it in position. So we'll make sure we use those, but it's pretty easy. You just line it up with the shape of the pan to start with, and then just press it down onto the pan. So just work our way around and just pop those little tabs in just into position really as you're going around you can see that's just sitting down on there nicely you know some people try to get away with reusing the old gasket there but it's really not worth it i mean you're saving a fortune by doing this job yourself just uh buy the true genuine parts pop our clean magnets back in you can see they're looking sparkling clean I did pop that fill indicator off just to get it in there nice and clean. Let's pop that back on. And as I said in the beginning, we have a new, a new copper seal ring to go on the drain plug. So whilst we're here now, we might as well get rid of that old seal ring, throw that away straight away and get the new one on there and prepped. That's if it wants to come off, of course. It doesn't really want to come off, so. Probably off camera, I'll just get that into the vise and work it off. All right, so after a little bit of wrestling, cause that was quite compressed, that old copper seal ring, managed to get that off and got the new one ready to go. Okay, so next thing we want to do, you just want to, with our lint-free cloth, just wipe all around the mating surface, where that gasket's gonna seal, just so it's nice and clean, so we get a really good seal on that. So just come around, just like that, really nicely, get that nice and clean. So we grab our new filter, just dip our finger in the old oil. We just wanna put just a layer of oil on that new o-ring just so it slides in nicely and then you just pop that up in the hole literally just like that and just push it up until it clicks and that is literally how it goes because the pan just comes up underneath and just lifts it up into position that final way so that's just perfect like that so the next thing we want to do is to position our freshly prepped pan into place so I'm just going to lift the back end in like that and then we'll manoeuvre the front back in around these electrical connections. Just being careful not to disturb that gasket as we're doing this. And then what we'll do is we'll just start with the two centre bolts. Now off camera I swap these to the new stretch bolts as I've talked about. So we just pop those in there. It's fairly obvious that they've got that little retaining lug on that bracket so just get these started off and put those in and i'll just get the one on this side in the middle as well and then with those we can actually now get the rest of those in start with the front ones because they're probably the little bit more difficult one so we've got this one that went on this side that's got that special extra little attachment for that additional bracket. That's probably a little bit tricky to, uh, to get in. Just a little bit fiddly, but we got that eventually there. Main thing with this job is just to be patient the whole way through and not to rush yourself. Let's get the one on the other side whilst we're here.
and then the other one on the back here. Okay, so just looking in, you can see we've got all of our stretch bolts. You've got the one up there, the one here, the one back here, and then over the other side, got the other stretch bolts in. So the one in here, here, and up the front. And importantly, just do a double check the whole way around that gasket that is all just sitting in nicely. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque these down to specification. Now it's really small torque, it's like four Newton meters and then 180 degree turn. So grab our torque wrench and set it up. So if the camera will focus, you can see we've just got it set on four Newton meters and that's not very much at all. So we'll jump under and we'll torque all of those to four and then we'll do that 180 degree turn. Okay, so let's start with the middle ones, I suppose. Okay, so that's right on four there on that one. Come across to this one over here. That's four there. Come across to this one here. That's four there, this one here. That's four there. Come onto the back one here. That's four there. And Onto this one up in here behind this bracket. This one's a little bit painful to get to. So just get up in there. So that's four there. So now what I'll do now that we've got, just check these middle ones are still on four since they went on first. Yeah, it's just a little bit fraction more there. Okay. And then once again, let's start with the middle and it's a 180 degree turn that we need to do. So literally we come in, that's 90 and we come around to the 180 on the stretch. We'll do the same on this side, start with the middle. So come around to 90 and then the the 180, and that bolt is stretched. So we'll do this one here. Come around to the 90, and then the 180. Same with this one. Do the 90 and the 180. And onto the front ones. So the 90, and the, the 180. And then onto the final one here. Once again, the 90 and the 180. And we are done. So by now, there's probably a few people thinking, but Drew, you haven't drained the torque converter. You haven't done the full job here. And that's actually intentional for this video. If you want to drain the torque converter, I'll just show you right now. It's up here, there's that black cap which you pull out and then you can actually see the torque converter in behind that rubber cap there. So with that rubber glange removed from the bell housing, you get someone else to come up on top of the engine like I'm here now. Then you get a 27 millimeter socket. They come down onto the front crankcase pulley and then they rotate the engine clockwise. Now, whilst they're rotating the engine clockwise from up here, you from underneath, you can see the torque converter through the hole in the bell housing where you remove that rubber glange. And you can see it come into view. You tell them to stop rotating and then you can take the grub screw out. It takes a four mil hex key and you'll get a, probably another one, one and a half liters of fluid out. Now the reason that I'm not doing it here today is this is meant to be an easy first time video 
for people that have never done the transmission service before on this vehicle. And me, myself, when I first did it on this vehicle, when I came to get the grub screw out, it was really tight. And I didn't want to risk then damaging it, damaging the torque converter as a DIY at home and not being able to get it back together. So I didn't actually drain the torque converter. But I've thought long and hard about this video. And the reason I'm making this video is after I completed the job, exactly like I'm doing it, there was a remarkable difference in the performance of the transmission. It shifted smoother and it was just a pleasure to drive. Distinctively, noticeably different. So that's why we're making the video. We're making it as simple as possible based upon my personal experience. And that's what it is, folks. So the next thing to do is to get this front electrical bracket back into position. As we can see, that bolt there is up in behind that front drive shaft. So just screw that in and then get the other one in on the other side. So that's the spot in here where that one goes right there. Get that little heat shield into place. That was that extra special little lug that held that transmission pan. So you just gotta get that one into the right spot there. You can see that's gonna go in there just nicely. And we just do those up snug. It's on like 22 newton meters if you wanna use the uh, torque wrench there. So then the next thing we want to do is to get our fill adapter, screw that in like that. So as you can see, we've got our Penrite Little Mate pump set up directly out of our automatic transmission fluid bottle here. Super convenient as opposed to using the pressure spray where you've got to convert it to another bottle in my opinion. But you choose. We then got that set up to our fill adapter and all we're going to do is turn that to the on position. Then we're going to start pumping. And what we're going to do is we're going to pump somewhere between five and a half and six litres of fluid up into the transmission. That's because I measured what came out. We took out roughly between four and a half and five litres. So we want to overfill it by about half a litre to a litre. And then once we've got it up to temp, we'll drain off the excess. So let's start pumping. So folks, I've just finished pumping six litres of fluid up into the transmission. As you can see, I've turned off the tap and I've disconnected our little mate pump from the fill adapter. Now at this point, it's important to leave your fill adapter in with your tap turned off. Because the engine's not running, it doesn't have the fluid up in the guts of the transmission. And if we disconnected it now, we'd drain way too much fluid. So we're gonna jump up into the car now, start it up, bring the transmission up to temperature, and then we're gonna drain off the excess with the engine running till it comes down to that green level adapter. Okay, so we're in the car. Let's start up the vehicle. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use our diagnostic tool to actually understand what the temperature is. So, come into Mercedes, ML class, diesel, ML300, do a manual, come into the transmission control module. Now we're coming to view data and oil level check, come into this menu. So we can actually see transmission oil temperature is currently 24 degrees. So we're gonna wait for that to come up to 45 degrees before we actually check the level. But in the meantime, with the engine running, got my foot heavily on the brake because we don't need to rotate the wheels, but we do need to cycle through the gears. So just pop it into drive, back into neutral, then into reverse. You can hear that's engaged. Pop that back into neutral. Pop that into drive. Now, when we do this, what that's doing, that's just allowing all of the gears and everything just to, you know, pump all the fluid up in and around those. So we just cycle it all through those gears. We could put it into a manual mode as well and make sure we actually force it down into the first and no, just shift it up through these gears. And really, you know, we've done that enough now, so we'll just, you know, cycle it and pop that back into park and just wait for that transmission oil temperature to uh, heat it up. 
as you can see it's just come between 24 and 25 degrees now so i'll just wait for that to happen now importantly whilst that's heating up we might as well use the time productively just to check all around the seal and we've got absolutely no leaks so i'm just checking this seal and i can feel it's all feeling really nice there's no leaks so i reckon we are pretty good i will add if you don't have a scan tool whilst they are relatively cheap i do recommend i put a leak to where you can buy one um, you can use an infrared heat gun onto the bottom of the pan i just like using the scan tool it's so convenient and when you've got it you know you can do all your own servicing and check engine code so it's a really useful bit of kit for only really hundred or two dollars so yeah okay so jump back into the car you can see it's come up to 31 degrees now now i should say if you've actually got the earlier style of transmission that's with the uh, red fluid traditionally so that's the uh, white or the black fuel level spout you only bring the temperature up to 35 degrees because i've got the late model transmission we bring it up to 45 so gotta wait a few more minutes but when it gets to 45 we'll set that level all right folks so as you can see it's just come up to 44 degrees now so let's just cycle it through the gears for one last time as you can see on the uh, scan tool it shows you the gear selection pop it into reverse just hold it there for a few seconds each and then pop the car back into park now as you can see it's just hit 45 44 now so let's pop under the vehicle so now that we've got it up to 45 degrees for this transmission we're just going to drain off the excess fluid that is in this pan so there you go we can see that's draining the excess off and as soon as we just see that start to splutter we know it will have come down to the level in the pan which is the fuel level and that's when we turn the tap off and we'll stick the drain plug in so we're just letting that siphon off it's probably got somewhere between half a litre and a litre of excess fluid in there and as i said before it's really important that you've still got the engine running at this stage in the procedure now the earlier transmissions remember they are 35 degrees whereas they're late low friction ones there we go turn that off and now we'll swap this over for our drain plug and we'll torque him up perfectly So importantly, I've just done that drain plug hand tight, but importantly, we set the level with the engine running. I saw a video recently where someone actually set the level without the engine running. So that's gonna really, for them in that case, not have enough fluid. So I'm setting this to 22 Newton meters. So that's perfect there. Just give that a, a wipe off and we're good to go. So there you go, we've got that pan cleaned off, got that drain plug in and torqued to specification. And as I was saying, just when that stopped coming out, we've got to make sure we set the temperature correctly. So the earlier variants, they had the 35 degree temperature. That's the black and the white spout, but with the later model, low friction, A89 option with the green spout, we've got to bring it up to 45 degrees as we've done here today. So the final thing to do is to get that under tray back under the vehicle. I don't need to show you how to do that. Get the car off the jack stands and take it for a test drive. So as I said earlier folks, it's coming up on two years since I last serviced this transmission. And in that time, it's done about 40,000 kilometers. So let's take it for a test drive now and see how it's gonna perform. see there with quite a 
modest acceleration, but maybe a little bit modest to hard. They were beautiful shifts. It's just shifting really softly. And that's what we want from the transmission. So, so far, I'd say this is actually feeling really good. Just coming up to this roundabout, I'll turn left and I'll slow down and we'll give it another modestly hard pull. Here we go. So come around and put our boot in. I mean, look at that, that's really shifting nicely. There we go, just beautiful. No harsh shifting, just smooth shifting. And straight away, it's just dropped down. We're doing 60 kilometers an hour. So in the US, that'd be what, 37, 38 miles an hour. Normal speed, which you do around the uh, towns. And straight away, you know, it's dropped into one of the higher gears. We're doing, you know, 1400 RPM, doing our 60 kilometers an hour. So I'll just come up to the next roundabout. We'll slow down there, and then we'll uh, do the same thing again. Here we go, just slowing down into this roundabout now. And give it a give it a bit. Another nice shift. You've got to be really happy with that folks. And we'll just turn left here again and we'll do another we'll do a modest acceleration this time, not as hard as before. Just modestly accelerate up. A nice downshift there. Nice upshift, there's no flaring of the RPM. It's just soft transitions. And we just bring it up to, you know, 50 kilometers an hour here. So, as I said earlier, you know, people say, okay, Drew, you didn't change the torque converter. Well, you know what? I've just changed the fluid that was in the pan and in the transmission. We've actually got 75 to 80% of the fluid out and straight away, this transmission is shifting better than it was before. It's really smooth. There's nothing harsh about it. This car's now got 171,000 kilometers on it. I've owned it for the last 110,000 kilometers. I've done all of the servicing myself and it is really, really running really well, shifting well. It's just a delight to drive. So anyway, drop a comment down below. Tell us what you think. I'd love to hear your opinion. So there you go, folks. There's my beginner's guide to servicing the Mercedes 7229 transmission. And I've been careful in the video to just call it a fluid replacement that we've done here today. So if you have liked the video, give us a like, it's truly appreciate. Drop a comment down below. We just love reading through all those comments. But in particular on this video, do you want to tell me about the style of the video? I've been really honest today. This was a beginner's guide and it was actually a fluid replacement. But in the future, if you're interested, I am going to film how to do a complete Mercedes 7229 fluid flush. That might be one of the things you want to check out in the future. But also, if you like this video, you may be interested in that playlist, which I mentioned in the beginning, where we're replacing all of the fluids completely in this vehicle, front to rear. And the last thing we've actually got is the rear differential now. So check that out if you're interested. But also, on the channel, you've got DIY maintenance and repairs on the Mazda 3, the Audi A3, and a number of repairs and maintenance around the home. So if you're interested in any of that content, do subscribe to the channel. Until next time, have a good evening.